All right, all right. Praise the Most High Yah in the name of our Lord and Savior, Yahushua, Jesus the Christ. In this video, we're going to talk about why do Christians dislike Negroes identifying as Israelites? Now, previously we did a video, did a video called, um, you know, about the cricket, about uh, cognitive dissonance, you know, and you can go check this video out here and you know what I'm saying? But in this video, we're going to talk more about, you know, the, the more underlying causes of what's really going on, the hidden motives that's going on behind this. So first, let's go to the first video that I clip that I got to show y'all, and then we'll come back and discuss it. All right, we are live. Uh, I'm Pastor Mike Winger. A lot of you guys know me. I try to help people learn to think biblically about everything, but I brought on a guest today, a special guest. I guess you're you're that way. Uh, Vocab Malone, also known as a street apologist, and I have a link to his YouTube channel down below if you guys want to check it out. I've known Vocab for a while now. We met a few years ago, um, but today we're talking about something that you've spent a great deal of time working on, which is Black Hebrew Israelites. And this is a particular group that I don't know as much about, but I've been asked about a lot and thought it'd be good to bring someone on who knows what's up to walk us through. Who are they, what they believe, how to interact with them, how to actually reach them and change minds, and to talk about why it, why it matters. This particular group is concerning for a few different reasons. So. So, all right, break us in a little bit, uh, you know, big picture. If you've never heard of the Hebrew Israelites or the black Hebrew Israelites, like what do we need to know 101? Who is this group? Uh, the key thing is the ideology of Hebrew Israelism. And the essence of it is if you're negatively impacted by the transatlantic slave trade, you might just be a true Israelite. There's different ways you can phrase that, but that's the essence of Hebrew Israelism. Now, there's a lot of things that are generally associated along with it because that claim in and of itself, although historically dubious, is not heretical per se. Um, it's all the things that get attached and the way this newly discovered, if it really is discovered, identity becomes the, the pinnacle of a person's identity and the trump card in their theology. So everything gets thrown out of whack. Everything's all tapsy-turvy. It's almost impossible. Um, I'm speaking anecdotally. Maybe it is possible. But, Mike, it is almost impossible to find a Hebrew Israelite of any type or stripe who is balanced in their view of Christ and in their supposed view of them being an Israelite. So there's like this issue that probably most people aren't even thinking of that becomes the center of the, the unifying truth yes. in the movement. And then it just – from there it branches out and it has really detrimental impacts on sort of central Christian beliefs, or at least it seems that it does that regularly. So yes. as you can see from that clip. You can see that the way that they present this, their introduction of the black Hebrew Israelites, right? They throw the term black Hebrew Israelites on that, you know, and they, they present this as if it's a threat to, to Christianity, right? That, you know, this can be detrimental to Christianity, right? As if Hebrew Israelites aren't Christians, right? Now, of course, anytime you got a group of people, you can have different sets and beliefs within that group. Right. But what you can have, you know, a Hebrew Israelite is based off of lineage. Right. Hebrew Israelite can be a Hebrew Israelite can be a Christian. A Hebrew Israelite can be a Muslim. A Hebrew Israelite can be, you know, a Buddhist. Right. Because Christianity, Islam and, and Buddhism is faith. Those are faiths. But a lineage. Right. Is what the Hebrew Israelites. So if black Americans go around and call themselves we're black Americans, you don't have a problem with that. But when you talk and when we say that we are Hebrew Israelites, then that's when it becomes a threat to you and a threat to Christianity from what they say. Right. And not only are, are Christians feeling this, and I'm going to show you another with a black Christian guy on here with, with this vocab Malone. Right. And then I'm going to show you how even the Israel consul, they got a problem with these blacks that are identifying as Israelites. So let's go to the next video. Before we even get into the questions, uh, you know, vocab, anything else that you want to say before we move forward about what you're seeing and any, any currents recently? What's going on with you? Well, uh, recently an organization that's uh, a think tank, uh, kind of a political and policy think tank outside of Washington, D.C., it's called the Manhattan Institute. 
Manhattan Institute uh, fielded a survey, and the survey was designed to determine the numbers of people who adhere to Hebrew Islamism. And at the end of the day, uh, the indications were shocking to the people who did the research. Nine percent of Black Americans self-identify as Hebrew Israelites. It's about four million people. And the fascinating thing about that is that it's grown since the last survey. There's only been two surveys on this topic. I've talked about both of them on my channel, but I don't think enough people know. One way to kind of put this in a frame of reference, Andrew, is there are more Hebrew Israelites than are than there are Black Catholics in America right now. So it kind of helps uh, shed light on the nature of the situation wow. we're facing. Wow. And, and as you're saying, it's growing rapidly. Wow, I, did, I didn't realize that, but that's definitely some alarming numbers, which is definitely a worthy topic to Yeah, they about. think they're going to take over. So when I say this, they think that uh, we're afraid. Listen, uh, we're not afraid. You know what Jesus said? He said that the gates of hell will not pre pre they're not going to prevail against the church. All right. So as you can see from that video, you see how he's talking about Hebrew, Hebrew Israelism as if it's a threat you know to christianity and how he's making it out to be you know the enemy of his faith right and he's painting this even with you see and you see this is not with just white christians but this is black christians also who who, who view this movement as it's it's something that's of the devil that it's it's a it's an enemy movement right but if you really understand the word of god you would understand that this is all you know part of what god is doing in reawakening the natural branches right but he did mention about, you know, the Manhattan Institute. And so let's go and look at the article that he was talking about. All right. So when we look at this article from December the 6th of 2023 by Charles Fane Lehman, right? You see the Manhattan Institute and you see how many are the black Hebrew Israelites. OK, so when we go down and we start scrolling down and looking at the video, we'll see executive summary. So you see now that you've got people who are basically looking at this group and basically uh, uh, reporting it as if it's it's some type of overthrow of, of the government, right? You know what I mean? Like like it's a terrorist group or something, right? But this is the executive summary. A series of recent high-profile controversies have brought renewed attention to Black Hebrew Israelism, BHI. So you see how they keep throwing the Black on it, right? The belief that modern-day American Blacks are descended from the ancient Israelites, okay? So now why is that a threat? Why is American Blacks being descended from the ancient Israelites, why is that a threat? Okay, so keep that in mind. While according to some, but not all, black Hebrew Israelites, modern day Jews are not, right? BHI has been associated with both violence and anti-Semitism, right? But, but relatively little is known about its prevalence or about how predictive BHI views are of anti-Semitism and support of violence, right? So you see when they start throwing this word out here, anti-semitism right? right you see that's when now you see the major problem that they are having is because modern day jews are not right the fact that it's an identity it's a it's a it's a disagreement over who the real ancient israelites are who are the descendants of those ancient israelites right this report provides details on the prevalence and correlates of black Hebrew Israelism based on an original survey of 1,075 black Americans and 555 non-black non Americans it finds, right? So they only surveyed 1,075 1, of black Americans. That's all they surveyed, right? Roughly 26% of the po black population and 14% of the non-black population. So this is how they skew numbers. Only 1,000... 75 black americans were, were were surveyed right and only 555 non-black americans were surveyed right and it says roughly 26 percent of the black population and 14 percent of the non-black population plausibly profess to believe that modern american blacks are descended from the ancient israelites the key belief of black hebrew israelism right so we don't know who those 1075 black americans that you you surveyed are right and then it says roughly 9% of blacks and 3% of non-blacks credibly profess these beliefs and identify as Hebrew Israelites. Profession of these beliefs and identification as a Hebrew Israelite is associated with warmer feelings toward Jews, but it also associated, but it is also associated with a greater willingness to agree with anti-Semitic beliefs. So there's that word again. 
such as the claim that Jews have greater loyalty to Israel than boycotting Jewish businesses over Israel's actions is justified and that Jews were involved in the slave trade, right? So now, if we are black Americans and we find out that Jews were actually involved in the slave trade, why should we not think that these people aren't who they say they are, right? Based off of Deuteronomy 28:68, you're not supposed to be involved in it. You're supposed to be, you know, in it. You're supposed to be the slave, right? Based off of what God said he was going to do to you, right? Profession of BHI beliefs identification is suggested associated with greater support for political violence. So now you see what it gets to. See, this is where I tell you they start trying to make it out to be, uh, oh, it's about political violence. But it's associated with greater support for interpersonal violence only among non-black BHI believers, right? So now you see where they're trying to, trying to paint this out as a terrorist organization. These findings suggest that black Hebrew Israelism, at least in some of its more radical manifestations, may be one factor contributing to, rise, to rising extremism and anti-Semitism, right? So you see where this is all going. Now let me show you another video. The major problem of Israel is with the young generation of the black community. You know, I wonder why Israel's biggest problem is the young generation of the black community when we're all the way over here. We don't have no land. We don't have no communities. We don't have no commodities. We don't have any resources. We don't have any bombs. We don't have any nuclear weapons. We don't have any missiles. You know, we don't have any military. You know, why would we be the biggest threat? Wouldn't the biggest threat be the people you're actually in war with? What do we have to do with anything y'all got going on? Could it be that the conspiracies about identity theft are true? Perhaps. Because I doubt that, you know, a lie would be a big threat to an entire country. I don't think a lie would. But what I think is the biggest threat is that the truth is being revealed and the world knows that. Time's up. All right, so you see, there's two things that's going on here that I want to want to discuss. Two words that I want to discuss and I want to get you the, the definition of and then we're going to come back and talk about it. The first one is lineage. And as you can see, what is the word lineage means, right? Lineal descent from an ancestor, ancestry or pedigree, right? So we see that lineage is about you being a descent from your ancestors, right? The next word I want you to see is heritage. All right, so the next word we have is heritage, right? And as you can see, heritage means the property that is or may be inherited and inheritance, right? So a heritage is property, as in land, that is or may be inherited, and an inheritance comes from your lineage, okay? So now let's come back. All right, so as we can see, you know, you see that not only are Christians seeing this as a threat, but you also have the people, the Jewish people who are finding this to be a threat, this rising, this new way of blacks identifying as Israelites, right? So they're taking the term Hebrew Israelite and making it out and to be this whole different, you know, this is a, a cult. This is some type of, you know, terrorist group, some type of terrorist organization, right? So this is what they start doing to try to try to dissuade people from, from understanding what your identity is, right? Who you are. There's a reason that our identity was stolen from us, okay? So now, when you have an identity, your identity also can lead to your heritage, right? So if I have a son and he's my he's my descendant, my what I leave when I pass on goes to him. It's his inheritance, right? But if someone was to steal his identity, they would do it in order to steal his inheritance, right? So now you begin to see what the real threat is, right? Remember, heritage has something to do with land. So now let's go to the word of God and let me show you something in scripture. Okay, so the first scripture that I want to show y'all is 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 21 through 23. This is the apostle Paul speaking. And I want you to see how when I earlier I said 
a Hebrew Israelite is just your your lineage, right? But your faith can be something totally different, okay? So now when Paul speaks in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, he's talking to the Corinthians, and he's talking to them about other people coming in and teaching a different gospel, right? So this is what he says. I speak as concerning reproach as though we had been weak. Howbeit, wheresoever any is bold, I speak fo foolishly, I am bold also. So he said, I'm bold in, in what I'm saying, right? Are they Hebrews? So am I, right? Because they are descendants of Abraham. Are they Israelites? So am I. Why? Because they're descendants of Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel, right? So when you got the term Hebrew Israelites, you're saying you're descendant of Abraham through Jacob, who is Israel, right? So this is describing your lineages. It ain't got nothing to do with your faith because your faith, you know what I'm saying, can be that, you know, of Judaism where you don't accept Christ, right? Or your, your faith could be where you're just, because the Hebrew Israelites, their faith by default has to be the law, the law of Moses, right? Because that's the covenant that they made with the Most High, right? So the Hebrew Israelites' faith by, by, by uh, default is, is that of the law of Moses, right? Now, your faith can also be in, that of Christ, that you believe that Christ was your sacrificial lamb, your atonement. That's why we don't take uh, um, in any more offerings to, to a high priest, to a Levitical priest. But you're, as a Hebrew Israelite, you still could be a Muslim. You still could believe in Islam, right? That would be your faith. So this is what I'm saying is that when Paul says, are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ, right? I speak as a fool, I am more. And labor is more abundant, and stripes above measure, and prisons more frequent, and deaths often, okay? So now, this is a lot of times what I go through, right? Because people will say when, when you're, oh, he's a Hebrew Israelite, right? And they try to throw me in a box and say, I'm a Hebrew Israelite. I'm a born again Christian. Do I believe that we are the Hebrew Israelites? Do we are the true descendants of Israel? Absolutely. Based off of the law, based off of the law of Moses, based off of all of the books and everything that has come out about black people migrating into, that the Israelites migrated into Africa. I've shown people all of the, uh, the books, you know what I mean? All of the, the maps and everything else. And that those descendants who were taken from at the west coast of Africa, you know what I mean, were put on slave ships and scattered all over the world, according to Deuteronomy 28, 68. Right. So do I believe that the descendants of those slaves are the Israelites? Yes. Now, the first thing people say, well, you can't prove that you need to prove it all the way back. Y'all don't say that when it comes to to these people that, that came from Germany and went over there. Right. You'll see. Y'all say, well, well, no, no. You know, they can prove it. How? You can't tell me they can prove it through DNA. How? The bottom line is, do you have Abraham's DNA? No, you don't. Do you have Jacob's DNA? No, you don't. Do you have Jacob's 12 son DNA? No, you don't. Right. Because the bottom line is, if, if I was alive 5,000, I mean, 2,000 years ago and there's a descendant now. And he may be of my lineage, but if you don't have my DNA, how are you going to be able to tie him back to me? You see? So when they sit up here and tell us, oh, oh well, because they know we ain't going to be able to say, yeah, we, we, we can prove it through DNA, right? But all we can do is say, or, or is, or does our DNA line up with a certain group of people over in this region of the world, right? And so what they try to do is play these little mind games, but you know, the same thing that you say to us. Why aren't you saying it to those people that went back in 1948? See, you're not going to say that. You don't play that little silly game that you do with us. So why is it that y'all got a problem with black people identifying as the Israelite, Israelites based off of Deuteronomy 2068? You see what I'm saying? 63 through 68. All right. Let's go to let's go back to scripture. All right. So when we go to Romans 11 and 1, you see where the Apostle Paul still says, and he's talking about his lineage, right? He say. He says, I say then, have God cast away his people? So who is this people that he's talking about? He's talking about the Israelites. He said, God forbid, for I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, right? So that's his Hebrew, that's the Hebrew part of the tribe of Benjamin. Benjamin was the son of Jacob, right? So he's basically saying, I am an Israelite too, right? So you see where he's talking about his lineage, all right? So in Romans 9, this is what Paul reads. This is what Paul writes. 
9 and 1. I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. So we see Paul's a Christian, right? I say the truth in Christ, right? I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost, right? So you see, Paul has the Holy Ghost, right? So he's spiritual Israel, right? He's the natural branch, but he's also filled with the Holy Ghost, right? That I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. Why? For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. So who is he talking about? He's talking about the Israelites, his kinsmen, right? Because all of them don't believe. And he says, who are Israelites? So now we see his kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises. Whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh, Christ came, who is over all, God bless forever. Amen. Right. So Christ came through the Israelites. Right. That's why it says he came to his own and his own received him not. But the law, remember, the giving of the law was given to who? The Israelites. You see. All right. So when we look at Deuteronomy 27, what I told you before about the Israelites, by default, their faith has to be the law of Moses because it's a covenant, right? Verse 27, 1, it reads, And Moses, with the elders of Israel, commanded the people, saying, Keep all the commandments which I command you this day. Okay? So this is by the law. All right? Now when we jump down to verse 9, okay? And Moses and the priests, the Levites, spake unto all Israel, saying, Take heed and hearken, O Israel, this day thou art become the people of the Lord thy God, right? So you see, Israel, the true Israelites, are the people of the Lord thy God. Thou, thou, thou shalt therefore obey the voice of the Lord thy God and do his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, right? So the Israelites have a covenant with the Most High, right? Based off Deuteronomy 28 and 1, what does it say? And it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. So you see, Israel, the true Israelites are supposed to be the head of the nations, right? If they would have, if we would have kept all of his commandments. But, but when you go down to Deuteronomy 28 and 15, what does it say? But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Right? So now, if you break God's commandments, if you don't do all, right? If you don't do all his commandments, this is what happens to the Israelites. So when we get down to verse 63... Right. We go all the way down. We're going to hit verse 63. Right. Matter of fact, let's just pick it out here. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes, which he commanded thee. Right. So all this bad stuff is going to be on you. Right. Verse 44. The stranger that is verse 43. The stranger that is within thee shall be get up above it, be very high, and thou shalt come down very low. He shall lend to thee, right? So the Israelites are supposed to be the ones who are being lent to, not the ones that's lending money out to the world, right? And thou shalt not lend to him. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. So instead of the Israelites being on the top, they're supposed to be on the bottom, right? And they shall be upon thee, verse 46, for a sign and for a wonder upon thy seed forever, right? Now, when we get down to verse 63, this is what Mosai said he was going to do to the Israelites, right? And it shall come to pass that as the Lord rejoiced over you to do you good and to multiply you, so the Lord will rejoice over you to destroy you and to bring you to naught. And you shall be plucked from off the land whither thou goest to possess it. So you got to get out of the land, right? And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth, even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. And uh, among these nations, right? So among these nations that you got scattered, thou shalt find, shalt thou find no ease. Neither shall the soul of thy foot have rest. 
but the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart and failing of eyes and sorrow of mind. So we're looking for people who are oppressed. We're not looking for people who are on the top. We're looking for people who are on the bottom, right? And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, and thou shalt fear day and night and shall have none assurance of thy life. In the morning thou shalt say, Would God it were even, and at even thou shalt say, Would God it were morning, for the fear of thine heart wherewith thou shalt fear, and for the sight of thine eyes which thou shalt see. And the Lord shall bring thee into a Egypt again and with ships. Now, people want to act like they're playing stupid, that Egypt just means, you know what I mean, this one country. But God didn't say one country in verse 64, did he? And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth, even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods. Right. So when you get down here, when he talks about Egypt, he's talking about into bondage. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again or bondage again with ships. Right. This is the verse that they all hate. Right. Because this tells you that the transatlantic slavery slave trade is the only place where we really know of people being scattered throughout the world via ships. Right. By the way, whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. Right. The land is kicked out from and there you shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women. And no man shall buy you or no man shall redeem you. Right. Meaning that ain't nobody just going to purchase you to get you out of slavery. Right. So you're going to be stuck in those lands until the most high come and get you. Right. So now let's go back. Let's go back. All right. So, again, when we start looking at the scripture and the scripture tells us what was supposed to befall the Israelites. Right. And that the Israelites should be still in this condition. Right. That the scattering had taken place into all nations and that you would be there. Right. And you are supposed to be on the bottom, not on the top. Well, when we look at that, we know who that is, but everybody wants to act like now, if you are a Christian, what I just read was out the Bible. But why is that Christianity omits talking about the Israelites? They say Jewish people. You're not talking about one tribe, right? Jew comes from the tribe Judah, Yahuda, right? So the bottom line is you got 11 other tribes. So in 1948, when you broke all those people back in, why is it just one group of people came back and called themselves just Jews, right? Rather than calling themselves Israelites. But you named the country Israel, right? So did you steal the identity so you could steal the heritage, which is the land, right? So anyway, when we get back into this and we start really understanding, there's other motives that's going on here. That reason why you really don't like, you know what I'm saying? Negroes identifying as Israelites. And I'll tell you why. But now let me show you. You don't have no problem when it comes to these Jewish people who went back to Israel and those people don't even accept Christ. But the reason why Christians have been taught that the, that Jesus was white was said that so that people they would believe that the Jews are white. Why? So that the English and the, the Jewish people who were in England and in America could go get a foothold in the Middle East. That's what it was all about. Right. So now let's go and let me show you why Christians now are deceived and why come what they believe. You know what I'm saying? Has been taught to them. Right. So let me let's go to the scripture. So real quick, uh, let's just start off with this. Um, Okay, so just explain to the to the listening and the viewing audience what is Hebrew Israelism? What or or what is the Hebrew Israelites? Just generally speaking, what what is it? Yeah, it's a movement centered on two main claims. One is we are the real Israelites, and the reason I say we is each group defines the we differently. Usually, though, the we is at the very least Black Americans, but sometimes they add and subtract from that group. But usually they'll at least say that. Um, but our group 
are the real biblical Israelites, meaning the blood descendants of, of the ancient Israelites. And then two, mm. your lineage matters in the sight of God. And so really number two is a bigger problem than number one. And the deal with number two is they say that, you know, this determines your standing before God, your lineage. So it's, uh, you know, salvation by race alone, set of grace alone. And so you have this situation where they'll say, well, you know, you can't be saved or if you can come into the kingdom, you're going to have a lesser place. Those are the things that they say. And so those two things are obviously counter gospel. And that's what they push. There's various versions of it, but that's what they push. And then their um, understanding of even not only who can be saved is problematic, but how, how one is saved. Because they'll say, got to keep this law. And yeah. then they have a Jesus who's not God in the biblical sense, and they deny the Trinity. Then they take away books of the Bible, then they add other books of the Bible, and then they got another leader with secret revelation. One claims to be second only to Christ. General Johanna is his name. Another who's dead now claimed to be the Holy Spirit manifest. His name was Jermaine Grant. And you go on down the list and you say, this is, a, this is clearly a false religion. Filled with false teachers, and yet they're all excited because their numbers are growing. Well, there's just fulfilling prophecies that Paul told Timothy in the last days. A bunch of false teachers are going to come out. People are going to fall away in droves. And he was like, that's the prophecy. They're fulfilling. They're not fulfilling other prophecies. They think they're fulfilling Ezekiel 37. They're not. They're fulfilling, fulfilling things about false messiahs and First Timothy and things like that. Um, so yeah. that's who they are, but it's very deceptive. You know, everybody wants to kind of... Uh, play nice with the doctor and act like it's not that big of a deal you know and everyone uh -huh. wants to be understanding and go slow and i'm just like i think the time for that is over so we got to really deal with this thing folks you know we can't just uh act like it's not a different gospel with a different jesus with a different everything <laughs> we have to really understand this is something else and so uh, that's what i try to do is to inform people about the differences There's so much more still to cover. Okay, so what are their attitudes, generally speaking, towards uh, what most of us would consider actually Jewish people, say the nation of Israel, that kind of thing? What, what's their attitude? The blessing of blessing Israel brings a supernatural prosperity to the person, to the church, to the nation that truly blesses the Jewish people. The U.S. is the relationship? All right, y'all go. The U.S has an intrinsic interest in making sure that Israel not only receives our best prayers and offers of success, but our armaments, our money, and our ability to make sure that in a very dangerous reason, this democracy survives. There are some uh, biblical prophecies that say that control of, of Jerusalem by the Jews uh, is important for the second coming of Christ. This entire matter is based upon faith of our maker, of our creator, but it's also faith of a chosen people.